This is my first look at the Sovel SV08. My name is Jim and this is the Edge of Tech. So I want to lay something out on the table right away before proceeding any more with this video. Sovel says that the SV08 is a tribute to the Voron 2.4. If you put them next to each other, you can definitely tell that designs are very close and this is definitely a clone of the Voron 2.4. So now that we got that out there, let's check out this printer. The printer was super easy to assemble and they say it should take about an hour. For me, it did take about an hour, but I had my little guy Tristan helping me. He's three, almost four years old and it was definitely a lot of fun to put this thing together with him. I was starting the bolts and he was helping me tighten them in with the uh, included Allen wrench and my, and my T-handles, of course. Gotta love the T-handles. But it was a lot of fun to build this thing and it's really not that hard to build. Definitely a huge difference between like the 40 hours a Voron would take compared to the one hour that this is gonna take you to build. But that aside, I don't wanna really compare this to a Voron 2.4 because I don't have one here to compare it to. But with this thing, building it for me took about an hour. Everything was great to put together. Everything was labeled properly. Uh, all the parts were in the right orientation and it was overall just a really cool build. The build volume on the SV08 is 350 by 350 by 345, and that's perfect for doing full-size things like helmets and larger prints that you wanna do. It's actually kind of the size of printer that a lot of people are going for right now or want to have in a fast printer, so that's really cool to see. The SV08 is a Core XY printer and it has four independent Z motors, one on each corner. This should allow you to use the quad gantry leveling or QGL to level out your flying gantry and make sure everything is pretty flat in there. It's actually called a flying gantry because the build surface stays still while the gantry inside is what moves up and down on this printer. Along with the QGL, it actually does automatic bed leveling right out of the box and it should, keyword should, automatically adjust the Z offset for you as well. It's all built in straight out of the box and it should use it hopefully in future firmwares. It'll actually use the little probe that's on the back of the bed to do the automatic Z offset. For now, it does a pretty good job. I just dialed it in and let it fly. The hot end actually has three total fans, two of them being dedicated to parts cooling alone. The front cover of the hot end is just held on by magnets and is super easy to pull off. And if you need to remove it fully, it's just one cable that plugs into the board for the fan that's in that front cover. The nozzle is proprietary on this, which is not my favorite thing to see, but it is a proprietary nozzle, so you'll have to get them from Sovel. And the extruder on the SV08 uses planetary gears, which is great for pulling your sweet plastic right through that hot end. Speaking of the hot end, it uses a ceramic heater, so it heats up super fast. And the bed is actually an AC heated bed, so that's actually very fast as well. The printer also uses linear rails on all of the axes Axis? Axi? Axis? Whatever it's called. It uses linear rails on all of them to keep everything stable and smooth, which is really nice to see. The gantry has a built-in camera that allows you to monitor your prints and also do time lapses through the web interface. We're actually gonna check out the quality of those time lapses when I show you the models I print in a little while, so stay tuned for that. This printer actually has a network jack, two USB ports, and an HDMI for external screens. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but it does have them built in and it's all ran by Clipper. And I'm not talking like three versions old Clipper. If I remember right, this is running on version 12 of Clipper, which is actually a newer version. It's really nice to see that out of the box at launch, it has a newer version of Clipper actually installed on the printer. And if you connect to the built-in Wi-Fi, yes, it does have Wi-Fi or the network you can use the Fluid interface from your computer and do pretty much everything you want right from there without even touching anything over here. If you do want to control it by the printer itself and maybe not put it on your network or, or something like that, there is a small panel in the front. It's actually very easy to use. It is very clear and the knob works very well for cycling through the menus and selecting things. It actually does a very good job, but you can also use the ports on the side like we talked about a minute ago and plug into the HDMI and the USB to a monitor or a clipper screen or something like that. And I see a bigger version of that screen right from the printer. I love the way it looks. And when I tested this, it just, it looked 
Super cool to have the interface right on the printer. Real quick, I'm gonna jump in and ask you to please smash that like button if you're getting value from today's video. And it really means a lot to have you as a subscriber. So please hit that subscribe button now if you haven't already done that and let's get back to it. Real quick, I totally forgot to shoot this, but it does have a filament runout sensor built in as well. So if you run out of filament, it'll tell you and stop the printer. It is actually built on the, the spool holder, as you can see here, and it does work. I did have a chance to use it, and it did work in the case that I had. So that's enough about the specs on the SV08. What really matters is how this thing prints, so we should check that out next. So before we get into the prints, just so there's no question, all of my prints today were done in Polymaker PLA filament. And I really like Polymaker. They've supported the channel in the past, but I love their filament and I thought I would go with that on all the tests that you're gonna see today. The first thing I did was these Benchy. It is a 12 minute Benchy and it came off of the SD card. Uh, you can clearly see that it was sliced for speed, not the highest quality, but hey, it's a 12 minute Benchy, it's not bad. I have seen far, far worse Benchies come off machines like after two and a half hours. So nice work, it could use some improvement, but of course, again, it was 12 minutes, it's not bad. Overall, not terrible. I think I could make this actually better at 12 minutes, but not a bad first print right off the SD card. Next, I installed the included version 19 of Orca Slicer and the profile that came on the SD card. Uh, courtesy of Sovel, I guess you could say. I wish it would have been the newer version of Orca Slicer, but I'm not sure if version 20 was out when they actually shipped this printer. So I get it. At least it was a newer version of Orca Slicer, not like three versions old or something. So I sliced up the clock spring attenuation base. I scaled it way up and it came out really good. I love this model. I love this model so much that I print it on many of the printers that I test, especially the really big one I did recently. It was like 900 millimeters tall, but I think the model came out really good. Sven over at Clockspring is an evil genius. Uh, he did an awesome job on this model, and this printer did a really good job on this print. Everything is solid. Uh, it, there's no layer adhesion issues or anything like that. Overall, a very good print for the first print that I sliced myself for this printer. Next, I grabbed the Clockspring Hot Makes. I always say Hot Makes because that's our live show. Uh, if you don't know the story, Sven over at Clockspring made the torture toaster for our show Hot Makes after we challenged him to come up with a torture test of a print. This thing is awesome, it came out really good. Uh, it definitely shows that there could be some improvement, but uh, when you open up the wheel, you can check out the overhangs here. They look pretty dang good, not bad. I think this thing has plenty of cooling on it. Uh, the wheels turn, which is great. The toast pops up and down, which is awesome. And uh, if you go inside to the actual gap, the, the sliders where you test the tolerances, um, I'm, I'm missing some now because I broke them, but the first three were very loose. They could actually just fall out. And then uh, point 0.1 and point 0.2, not so much. So they were, they were not so much uh, <laughs> loose. Uh, not too bad on the torture toaster test. This was a fast one, just over like three or three and a half hours. Um, not, not too bad. Everything else looks pretty good, but it did a very good job on the clock spring torture toaster. So next I thought I would just load something really big on this thing. I grabbed the Galactic Armory Clone Trooper Helmet. I've printed that in the past. Actually, it's like right there. Uh, but I thought I would throw a full size one on this bed. I loaded up Shadow Red, which is a black and red dual color filament. And after a few hours, it failed. The print shifted and it, it failed. I had to stop it. <laughs> The, the supports are still falling off, uh, but I had to stop it because it got a very big layer shift. You can actually see it right there. Um, it was very disappointing because I only had one roll, uh, one kilogram roll of the Shadow Red by Polymaker, and I love this color, and I thought it would be so cool on a uh, Clone Trooper helmet, seeing the black and red kind of thing. Um, I, I was pretty disappointed, not a happy camper, but the show must go on, so I scaled it down, so I had enough filament, and I reprinted it. The second one succeeded, and it looks something like this. It is not perfect at all, actually, but 
definitely a good start. The supports came off super, super easy, as you can see in the, the video I'm showing right now. And uh, I think overall, not a bad start. Um, it looks really cool. I love the black and red kind of shift in there. Uh, it kind of goes all the way around like that. It's, it, I just, I love this filament and I thought it'd be really cool to have kind of the, the shifted clone trooper helmet. Um, there is some holes, like I, I can actually see holes through the top up here. So it's, I think it's just some extrusion issues we need to dial in. Um, mostly attributed probably to the profile that came <laughs> with this printer, if we're being 100% honest. But not a bad print. Definitely, I could keep it back here and it, it's not something you guys would ever see on the shelf, but up close, eh. But that's the helmet and that is the, the big one that I printed. Uh, obviously, not full size anymore because I, I didn't have enough of the shadow red to pull it off, but I love it. Let me know in the comments, do you guys like this a dual color? shift kind of helmet. I, I think it looks so cool. <laughs> Speaking of some of the issues I had, I really think a lot of them are probably attributed to the profile that, that uh, Sovel sent over. Um, it can be so much better. I, I'm gonna use the built-in tools in Orca Slicer, run it through all of like the calibrations, dial everything in, and this thing should be printing much, much better after that part's done. Uh, the thing is, um, Sovel, if you're listening, this is something that you guys can do in-house. Orca Slicer has the tools in the top. You can run it through on your test machines and, and send out a really polished uh, profile for us to use. I think um, if I was a new user, I would be kind of disappointed with this, um, this quality. But again, this is, you know, before it's released, I don't know if the firmware is going to change. They could have a better profile by now since I got this machine. So those things are definitely variables, but I'm going to tune it with Orca Slicer and get this thing printing much, much better because I really do think it's actually capable of printing some amazing prints. And this is a huge case use for a big printer like this. Full size helmets are a big thing and printers this size can easily print them. Something else that I did want to touch on and we kind of touched on this in the beginning of the video as well, is that this is a clone of the Voron 2.4. Uh, Sovol is not hiding that. It's perfectly fine and legal to do. They can clone it. Voron is open source. Their designs are open source and anybody out there could clone and make their own. Uh, you know, in, in super early days of Voron, you would source all of your parts, stuff like that. Uh, there's tons of kits now. LDO makes some amazing kits for the Voron. And Sovol just kind of took the design, made it their own kind of, and, and a little bit easier to put together for someone who maybe doesn't have like 40 hours of time to put one together, put everything in one box and, and flat pack shipped it. That's kind of what they did with this. Um, the cool thing is, is that Sovol uh, didn't, they didn't work with Voron. They didn't communicate ahead of time saying we're doing this or anything like that. Uh, but they did reach out and, and let Voron know that they would like to give them uh, a percentage. I, I think it's actually $2 per sale back to the Voron uh, team. As a, as a contribution. So I really hope they follow up with that. I know uh, the Voron team and Voron Design has posted some stuff on Twitter and, and I think uh, Taylor uh, has talked about it on his channel as well. But um, you know, I really hope they do that. I'll, anybody out there can go to the Voron page, click the donate button and, and toss some money in there. But uh, you know, if these guys actually contribute the $2 per machine that they are promising, that's a really cool, uh, thing to do for the Voron community in general. You don't see that a lot from 3D printer manufacturers and it's just, it's really cool to see them kind of giving back uh, to the roots of this machine. So to kind of sum this video up, this is a first look, not a review of the Sovol SV08. My initial findings, my initial thoughts on this printer kind of thing. I think it's a good printer. I think that it can be much, much better. It is not perfect out of the box but I think with some tweaking and dialing in, it could definitely be a very good printer. It has good components. Um, it heats up fast. Everything builds very easy. The camera, uh, it does have a little light. I didn't really talk about that, but it has a little like four or five inch light right under the front extrusion. I would have loved to see that much, much like 
the whole side of this extrusion or something to give out much more light than that. But, but um, you know, I think with everything combined in this package, it's a, a pretty good package. It can be much better and it will be much better once people start putting more time into the profile and the, the clipper config and that kind of thing. So overall, Sovel, I think you did a good job on your first printer that's kind of a clone of a Voron. Um, not a bad place to start at all. So for you at home, if you're looking for a brand new Core XY printer, maybe a larger printer that prints actually pretty dang fast, I would definitely keep an eye on this. Uh, if you're willing to do a little bit of tweaking and dialing in, this is definitely a printer you should put on your list and check out. Uh, there'll be a link in the description below if you want to do that. But if you're willing to put a little bit of time into it, this could be a really good printer to add to your arsenal. Also, I forgot to mention that they are gonna have some accessories coming soon. I'm not sure what soon is. It could be a month or a couple months but uh, some of the accessories will include a full enclosure for this printer uh, that has like drag chains and that kind of stuff on it. Different size nozzles will be coming as well because it is a proprietary nozzle. So they are gonna do a separate bigger screen for this, which is pretty cool. And in collaboration with Coprint, they announced a multicolor uh, AMS system, which is it's pretty cool because they reached a deal with Coprint to be able to use that system on this printer. So those things are coming in the near future so keep that in mind also if you're looking at picking one of these up well that was kind of a long one and it's all i have on the brand new sovel sv08 and if you're in the market there is a link in the description below like i said before and if you haven't seen this video right here you have to check that one out